Hi, Vijay Mishri here. In this video, I want to share with you the five red flags directors and executives must avoid. Now, this is a common question which I keep on getting that what are some of the bottlenecks or what are some of the actions that we as directors and executives undertake which can hamper the growth of organizations. So I've just selected five for now. I know there are very many others, but for now I've just selected these five which I believe will help you and make a profound impact in your organization. So let's deep dive straight into these five red flags directors and executives must avoid. The first and foremost is assumptions. Now, my dear friends, look, assumptions is good. You need to take into account assumptions. But at the end of the day, you have to make sure that you get facts in place. Now, the problem here is, is that some organizations which I've come across, they are taking more assumptions and not really looking into facts. Let me give you an example. There was a service industry some years ago and it posted very good profits and the next milestone they wanted to achieve, what happened is they did not take certain facts into account, certain external conditions. Because they were going to a different territory, they did not look into the political environment and certain regulatory uh, issues which would impact that particular project they were undertaking. And uh, eventually that resulted in them eroding a lot of capital. So my point here is, is that you must make sure that you have enough facts externally, internally. What is it that you can really do to ensure that you've got enough evidence and enough information so th that you have a heightened level of confidence whenever you're making those effective decisions? In my opinion, 60, 70, 80 percent of facts is fine. 20% or 30% you can go with your gut, making sure that all directors' perception and feelings are taken into consideration. That is going to make a profound impact in the growth of your organization. Let's move straight to the next point, which is wrap up. What do I mean by wrap up? Look, as a corporate coach, non-executive director, executive director, I have noticed that in some instances what happens is is that board members are not fully prepared by wrap up what i mean is is that they are unprepared when they come to the uh, meeting itself now here's what happens the board documents being sent are actually not sent on a timely basis that is the first problem that is when we look at the root cause problem one of the key problems is is that they do not have that uh, time to prepare. That is one side of it. But the second bit is the level of immersion, the level of understanding, the level of capturing the information to ensure that whatever is in discussion is properly brought on the table. And, and this is a key problem which I've noticed in some organizations. So make sure that you are extremely prepared depending on the size complexity uh, and the industry in which you are in you need to make sure that everything that is being discussed is properly taken into consideration because at the end of the day when you enter the boardroom and again it doesn't matter whether you are a small medium or large organization you need to be well prepared to ask the right questions which is going to make an impact to the overall health and growth of your organization so make sure that you are prepared just like someone said that chance favors the prepared mind you need to be prepared and make sure that whenever you are taking those choices or whenever you're contributing to the choices you put your 100 percent in that particular decision making process let's move forward to the third point which is value point what do i mean by value point here, let me give you an example again. There was this manufacturing organization and I was a non-executive director and a corporate coach for this organization. What happened here is, is that in that particular meeting, the chair who was the owner of the organization was actually dominating the conversation and he was basically uh, sort of taking into consideration the viewpoints of two of his co-members in the board. 
So in other words, what was happening is that instead of having views from say five or seven board members, he was basically just skewing or rather he was just being influenced by two of his directors. It was quite noticeable that the decisions would not really take contribution from everybody in, in that particular setup. So my dear friends, here's the thing, empower, encourage and make sure each and every board member contributes to the discussions. So long as it's focused, so long as it's within the parameters, it is very important to understand that that constructive dialogue is extremely important. Let's move forward to the next point, which is energy drains. Now, my dear friends, this is a big one. When do you have energy drains? You will have energy drains when the discussions are on mainly historical information. I've noticed in organizations, and again, I'm referring to mid-sized organizations here. What happened is in one particular meeting, the managing director tells me that isn't this really powerful, the management meetings they are having. And I told him, what about the future forecasts and the interpretations relevant to the outside conditions? And I said, how do you connect and craft towards the vision of your organization and link it to operational activities? So the problem here is, it's good to go through management reports and all that, which is pretty important, but the distinction between that macro level or the governance aspect or that long-term thinking has to be linked to the short-term activities. And that is the key missing element which drains energy. Rather than making sure that the organization is proactive and uh, outlook driven. So in other words, it is looking into ways and means and mechanisms of growth improving their value pipeline, ensuring they have the right sort of leaders in place as well. This, my dear friends, I urge and press upon you that this is a key problem why some organizations or many organizations don't grow. So you have to be very careful about the type of meetings, the relevance of the meetings, the distinctions between short-term management reports as well as long-term uh, linkage. So that is very important. Work towards that and see the difference it makes in your organization. And the final point, which is equally important, is BAU. Now, this is common in many organizations. And this is, by BAU, I mean business as usual. I've spoken in seminars, conferences, and I've met so many other people in different various setups as well, and companies as well. And I'm always curious to find out what their bottleneck is. And in many instances, I see that they struggle to scale up. I see that they are stagnating. And what happens is it's always business as usual. Complacency kicks in. They are making profits. It's not that they are not making profits, but it's just passive mechanisms in place. That dynamism is missing and that progression path is missing. That the growth is not in parity to the growth of the external conditions. In other words, the markets outside in, in your industry could be growing faster than what you are growing. It is very important that every day, every single point, you must have that curiosity. You must see what is it that you can do to make an impact to the growth of your organization. One of the things that I do with the companies that I coach is that I tell them to focus on five. What do I mean by focus on five? Ask those five key questions which are power driven, which are all growth oriented, but with a brainstorming session, which is going to really unfold and bring out new value drivers for your organization. There's so many questions and the questions have to be specific. For example, what are three specific things we can really do to increase our market share? And just use this amongst the directors and executives in your organizations and come up with points, come up with ideas and see if you can add traction. One or two ideas is going to change the face of your organization. And by the way, focusing on five, is an investment that you need to make consistently. That is what I believe in. 
and the impact is profound. So my dear friends, I hope you found this particular training on five red flags that directors and executives must avoid insightful. I look forward to seeing you in the next video where I'll share with you more insights on how you can grow your company as well as become a world-class leader, entrepreneur, director, executive, and manager. Thank you very much. Bye for now.